impressive thing is I managed to do, do something like 12,000 steps without, you know, without moving. I was standing still and I did 12,000 steps. <laughs> you were standing still, imagine how much I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Integral Conversations. I'm so glad to be joined today by my friend Chris Pelly. Now Chris is a musical director at the University of Leeds Music Department. So Chris, how are you doing? I'm well thanks, I'm alright, how are you? I'm very good. Now Chris, good. <laughs> how did you actually get into this industry? Where did it all start? Uh, well, I guess it all started with, uh, you know, no school productions and then joining my local kind of junior Amdram uh, company. Uh, I, I did some memorable turns as uh, Fagin and uh, Ugly in Honk. Uh, so, you know, I was quite typecast as a, as a young actor. Um, but then uh, really, in, in terms of conducting and, you know, MDing, um, I came to that, I came to conducting more from the classical side. Um, and then while I was at uni, I was playing in shows, um, playing in the bands for lots of shows. And then uh, Ian recommended me to Buttershaw uh, when he retired as their MD. And that's kind of how I came to be an MD really. So uh, most of the conducting that I, that I do and have done is you know classical orchestras and choirs and opera. Um, but I do enjoy musical theater as well. And so I'm, I'm you know, pleased to have had that opportunity to have worked with Buster Shaw. So, uh, what process do you go through when you're being a musical director for a show? Like, what do you have to prepare? How do you work with everyone? Oh, yeah, well, it's, um, it's, it's a kind of, it's quite a huge task in a way. Um, you know, when you, when you approach a show, when you're, when you're going to be in a show, when you're playing a role or, or being in the chorus or whatever, it's kind of, you can approach the score and you can look at, you know, you can highlight, these are all the bits that I have to sing and these are the bits that I have to learn. But when you're the MD, it's basically every page of the score you have to learn. Um, and so I try to sort of um, try to start as early as possible, obviously, you know, before auditions and everything, um, just familiarizing myself generally with the score as a whole, um, listen to as many different, recordings as possible if there are different versions of, of the, the show recorded um, play through it on the piano kind of just get the feel of all the different musical numbers just get a sense of how it all fits together how it all flows and just kind of try and get inside the music in a sort of in a general way um, that's generally kind of how I approach it in advance and then once you get into auditions so you you kind of you get to see who who you might be casting and and that informs kind of what you might do with the show you know because if, if you've got somebody playing a particular role who you know has a has a really great lyrical voice you're going to make the most of that and if you've got somebody else who is um not such a kind of confident singer but more of an actor you know you, it'll change the way that you um you work on those songs so you know the people that you cast in the show obviously has a huge impact and then i find really just throughout the um the rehearsal process everything just sort of beds down and as you as you go over things with the singers and as you run things in in chorus rehearsals you kind of settle into a, a rhythm with all the numbers and and it all starts to flow and you get a feel for the kind of um the overarching shape of the the show as a whole and how how everything flows into one another so i find you know, there's there's a preparation you do in advance, which is kind of getting inside the score, looking at the nitty gritty details of, you know, how am I going to teach these harmonies and stuff and things like that. But then what I find almost the most useful part of it is actually going to the rehearsals and just doing the, you know, playing through the music, going through it and kind of getting the feel for actually doing it because that helps you, you know, shape the overall overall um uh show as a whole i don't know if that answers the question yeah, yeah it does. Uh, so you sort of touched upon my next question within that answer okay so um 
how does an actor actually change the performance of the band and you as an MD? So when you're working with an actor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. Um, so as I say, you know, different, um, different people bring different things to, to the stage. Um, and so some people are more confident you know, more musically confident, more able to kind of take a um, look at the, the printed notes and kind of read that and just sing it confidently. Some people you, you have to kind of coach them a little bit and other, other people um, are less confident with the singing and, and are able to kind of take music, you know, take the music in a different direction. You know, often people in musical theatre, you think of, um, uh, who was the, uh, um, the guy that plays Henry Higgins in the, uh, in the film, Oh God! Uh, What's his name? I can't, uh, oh, that's annoying. Yeah, but famously, he didn't really sing. He just kind of speaks the role. Um, I'm really annoyed. I can't remember his name. But anyway, he's it's quite fa you know he's a famous example of somebody who doesn't really sing but just kind of speaks the music, um, and so that that changes the way that that um, you would accompany it because if you've got somebody you know singing really lyrically you're going to make a lot of kind of um, the lyrical aspects of the music and the kind of rubato and, and, and things like that. Whereas if somebody's doing it in a more parlando, in a more spoken way, um, it needs to be a little a bit more kind of flowing and immediate and, and less, almost, almost less obtrusive. I mean, obviously the music, the, the band in a, in a musical never wants to be obtrusive. It kind of, it's always supporting what's going on on stage. Um, but when when you're uh, when you've got a cast member that that really is kind of leans into the music and, and the the sung element that allows the band to do a little bit more to perhaps play a little bit more expressively um, and and the MD to maybe do a little bit more flouncing around and pulling about with the tempo and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it, it does it makes a huge difference. And obviously, you know, um, there are you know some people. You kind of <laughs> there's there's different different kind of ways of conducting singers. There are some singers for whom less is definitely more, and the more you try and conduct the singer, actually the worse it works, and you just need to step back and let them do their thing, and you just worry about the band. And then there are other singers who are very easily led and and um, want somebody to actively conduct them. Um, that's not to say you know neither of those is is better than, than the other. It's just two different approaches, uh, two different ways of working. Um, so that kind of informs what you're doing as well, whether the people on stage want to be conducted by you or whether you're kind of conducting, uh, almost following them, you know. Which one was I in, Kips? <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, uh, I, I said, having said it in a very binary way like that, I mean, it's more of a kind of, it's a spectrum, isn't it? And everybody's yeah. somewhere kind of somewhere on the spectrum. I think you're probably more towards the end of uh, just let you get on with it yeah. and, and worry about what the band are doing. I remember, I think it was the final show. Uh, As I say, oh, it's, not, it's not a comment on yeah. it. Oh, oh, no. But I, th I think it was the final night of the show. There was one one song I did me conducting on the final night because I just got out of time and just went wrong with it. Ironically, it was I never get anything right. That uh, song. <laughs> I was like, ah, focus. <laughs> yeah, well, that always happens. Um, that'll always be the case. Uh, you know, there's there's always, especially with amateur productions. You know, when you haven't been doing the show for six months, when you've well, I mean, you have, but you've been rehearsing. It and then you put it up for a week and that's it that's all the time you spend on stage there's always going to be things like that that are a little bit uneasy and, and haven't quite settled um, and it's i think one of the most important skills of, for an md is is the ability to take control of a situ situation like that and to be you know calm in a crisis and kind of steer the ensemble through anything that might go wrong or, or just not quite go to plan in that way so, do you have any uh, highlights or horror stories from other years of MDing? 
working with bands? Um, I've certainly, I've certainly at times had to be quite stern with with people, uh, yeah. in both in the band and and on stage. Um, I remember it actually yelling at one of the band members during a, a dress rehearsal. Obviously, we wouldn't yell at the band during a performance. It was a dress rehearsal, and um, I think I had a I had a dep on this on the bassoon part and they didn't notice that there, there was a cut or something they missed a cut somewhere and they were merrily playing away and it just didn't nothing it, you know it didn't make any sense what they were playing it didn't fit at all and i'd kind of i gestured at them i'd waved at them and they weren't looking and so in the end i just yelled i was like lucy does that sound right and, <laughs> and they kind of oh, uh, sorry, and, you know, found their way back in after that. Um, so, yeah, I can, be, I can be stern in that way if I, if I feel like people aren't, uh, aren't giving me the, the due attention uh, that they should be. Um, highlights, I mean, I, it's just getting the show up. Every time you get a, a show up on the stage and, and open it in front of an audience, you know i think that's why that feeling is 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 why we all do it isn't it because let's let's be honest it's a bit of a pain in the bum it's like it's a load of work going trudging out for rehearsals every evening and then tiring yourself out doing a show run you know the reason we do that is is that feeling you get when when you step out on stage in front of the audience opening night you know that kind of electric buzz that's kind of, ah, oh, it's unparalleled, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. I think when, I, when, we, did, uh, when we did Hello Dolly in, uh, uh, with Buttershaw, uh, um, there was a, a brass band on stage in the Act One finale before the parade passes by, uh, and they marched on stage and they were playing away and uh, we did four performances and on the first two performances the brass band came on stage and they just didn't sync up with the band in the pit and so we just had this two bands going on out of time and it was a bit uncomfortable and then on the third performance they nailed it and i remember finishing that and just thinking yes absolutely banger you know we nailed it uh, so that was uh, that was a highlight it's things like that when when you uh, when you get something and it and it clicks into place like that, uh, when you've been rehearsing it for six months or whatever, uh, that's definitely that's the highlight, I think. And of course, every night of Kips was like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> very tiring show. Yeah, yes. I do I wish I'd given you because, uh, well, because I, I wore the, uh, oh, the my wife's <laughs> it for for one of the nights to see what it said about my kids. And I do wish I'd given it to you to measure your heart rate and your, the number of steps you took. That would have been interesting. I remember you saying, oh, yeah, I've done these steps. I was like, can I please wear this? Can I please wear this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I th the impressive thing is I managed to do, do something like 12,000 steps without, you know, without moving. I was standing still and I did 12,000 steps. <laughs> you were standing still. Imagine how much I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, so um, one thing I want to ask is how does conducting an opera differ and compare to doing a musical? So what are the main differences mm, mm, within it? Mm. Uh, well, as I, I sort of touched on the, the, there's a, the, the music has a slightly different place in the hierarchy in a musical as compared to in an opera. Um, in that there's in opera there's kind of more opportunity for um, I don't want to just say more opportunity for musical expression because there's plenty of opportunity for musical expression in musical theatre but it's a kind of um, uh, I don't know how to describe it you can be more more kind of direct and upfront with the musical element and and you know you can say yes here we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of almost stop everything else 
and for a moment we're just going to have this musical you know this passage of music and we're just going to listen to it and i'm going to pull it around and i'm going to you know i'm going to do all this and and it kind of it's almost as if you just it becomes a, a purely musical performance for a moment obviously it's not a purely musical performance i'm i'm a very strong you know people say oh opera is only about music it's definitely not it is musical theater as well um but there's a kind of there's a way in which um it is sort of first and foremost a mu music you know a, a performance of music and it is a theatrical performance of music whereas in musical theater i feel that it's sort of as though it's a it's a theater performance with music if you see what i mean it's sort of accompanied by music as opposed to an opera which is a musical performance with a with theater again i feel like i'm downplaying the theatrical element of opera which is wrong <laughs> but it's just a kind of it's a slightly different hierarchy um and so when i'm conducting an opera in a way i'm a lot as a conductor i'm, a, I'm much freer to uh to do things that i want to do to pull the music around and to to kind of take control whereas in a musical when you're emptying the musical um it's almost like there's a sort of a machinery that you're operating and it, it again i don't want to make it sound like it's not a creative expressive um experience because it very much is um but it, it's more that you're feeding into a um um something else which if you do too much you know funny business while you're conducting it kind of you can you can actually disrupt the rest of the process in, in a way that isn't the case in opera i think i think i've explained that very very badly uh i right. i think I, the wrong time. what it comes down to <laughs> i could i can flounce around and be more poncy when i'm conducting operas uh, <laughs> that's that's what it comes down to <laughs> So uh, I just have one last question for you. Okay. Uh, do you have any advice for people wanting to go into like the music side of theatre once it's safe to go back, obviously? Yeah, yeah, hopefully that'll be sooner rather than later. Um, my advice would be, um, well, firstly, to just do as much as you can of, of theatre, both in terms of finding as many different opportunities as you can, but also get as much experience of all the different elements of it as you can. Um, you know, I've, I've played in bands and I've, I've conducted musicals. I've been on stage in lead roles and in, in part of the, you know, the company. I've done backstage, I've done lighting and sound and stage crew. Um, I've done production. I've done, you know, I've been on committees and things. I, I, I've, I've tried to do kind of as, get experience of as many of the different um, kind of approaches and, and, and sides of, of the theatre as I can. And I find that extremely helpful when I'm, when I'm doing one role because it, it helps me to understand the bigger picture and what everyone else is doing. Because um, you can often find there might be, you know, there can be friction between different parties who, who don't really understand what each other are doing. Uh, or if they don't understand what each other are doing. So, so getting a lot of experience of, of the different, um, the different uh, aspects of, of the theatre would be one thing. And the other thing is just it, make, when you, it, make yourself indispensable, basically. Be the kind of person that people say, oh, we need him or we need her, we need them. Uh, yeah um be the kind of person that people want to work with okay and that's that is about that's about approach that's about um kind of work ethic in a way it's about your attitude if you come to rehearsal prepared and ready to work and committed and focused you'll you'll be the kind of person that people want to work with um you know never just phone it in if if you want people to want you in their company 
you've got to bring your A game and you've got to make yourself indispensable. Um, so I think that's the best, that's the best advice that I can give. Some brilliant advice. So Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. That's been my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in to another episode.